I would describe us here as a little hole in the wall, like a little hidden gem. See how this jiggles? Those are ready. Because no one would ever thought there'll be this type of barbecue here in HP. I don't spend any money on advertisement. I don't pay influencers. I don't do any of that. The best recommendation is word of mouth. Ray's Barbecue is a family run and operated business and we're putting every single bit of love between my mom, my brother, and me. It wouldn't be briskets without cows, so we have a lot of love for cows here. Ray Barbecue para mí es muy importante. Me siento bien afortunada de tenerlo. My dad got into cooking ribs at home. I got to experience, you know, the Carolina style, the Memphis, Kansas City, the Texas, obviously. It's always great to see how different areas put different love and different types of twists on their, what they call barbecue. My first memory of my dad cooking barbecue, it was actually not a good one. <laughs> oh man, everyone got sick. <laughs> everyone got sick. It is, but, but we, it's something we just look back and just laugh about. Most of our vacations are honestly, we would consider it trips for work. That's really what kept us even more motivated and inspired to do the barbecue. I even made us go on a trip too to Texas just cause like on my birthday, I was like, I want barbecue, Texas barbecue. We were never afraid to close the restaurant for a couple of days or a weeks to go for that barbecue journey. Because in the day when we come back with new ideas that help us level up. I'm laying in the brisket right here in the top of the butcher paper. Looks good to wrap. There's a lot of juice, way more than you would expect. And none of it goes away as long as you wrap it tight. I would say barbecue is coming in a, in a wave here in California. El primer día, mi esposo y yo hicimos unos sandwiches de pulled pork. Y es, esperábamos que se vendiera, pero no como se vendió así. Y ya el segundo día fue más gente. Fue donde no... En dos horas terminamos todo lo que habíamos hecho. No tanta gente de llegar a y nos hiciera tan famosos un sándwich de pulpor. Hey, your pit master, half pound, sausage, tail salad, and a lemonade. I appreciate you. Thank you. In Huntington Park, there is not much barbecue. We're based off here in the borderline of HP and Vernon. In the St. George Plaza, which we're at, it's quite diverse. There's all types of little things, car supply stores, stuff like that. And traffic here will be Vernon. A lot of blue and white collar workers come in here because they don't want to go to downtown. It's a headache with parking. So we get a lot of the lunch rush right here. Here we have a painting of my father, Rene. My favorite part is the attention details in his eyes. It's just the way he looks. I know that's him. I know that's my dad. El primer año fue algo muy bonito. Algo emocionante, algo que mi esposo y yo no esperábamos. Un futuro tan grande como lo tenemos ahorita. La reacción de él, muy bonita. Eh, estábamos felices de, de, de que veíamos un futuro bonito para, los do, para nuestros hijos y para nosotros. Los dos pensamos que él que la vida había cambiado a bien para nosotros. Era muy emocionante ver de que de lo que habíamos logrado en pocos días. We did not get our hands dirty until the week he passed away. My dad was very, very, very I want to say possessive of his barbecue because he always put out the best where he thought he could not disappoint anybody. My dad, I remember uh, when we both made the sausage, I would suggest ideas, but 
he would, you know, deflect them because he had his vision of how he wanted it. The first thing we had to learn about barbecue was learning how to manage smoke, which is one of the most important, probably the first important thing of starting a barbecue. Clean smoke. Because you could have everything, best ingredients, but if that smoke is dirty, the food is done. The food is not good. We, we got pushed in deep water, and I was able to, uh, to get around that. It's about 50% of pork meat, 50% of beef, so about 25 to 50% of fat ratio in the sausage. To prep for sausages, that's very uh, time consuming. So day one, grind the meat. After that, I'll mix it by putting spices. I'll add in some uh, fresh red pepper. Gives it a little kick of heat. I hand mix it, even though I have a very expensive mixer. <laughs> Maybe better results hand mixing. So I'm gonna hand mix it. <laughs> Oh, it's tiring, but I think it's worth it, so I'll do it. After a day of curing, stuff the casings, link them, twist them, let them dry another day. On the third day, that's when I give them a cold smoke treatment, very low temperatures. After about five hours, I'll give them an ice bath. They're ready for the next day. I'm only 20 years old. As I like barely started to work here, I was just, you know, like doing busboy things. You know, my lunch would be a slice of brisket, potato salad, and some pickles. And I sat down in the back to eat and I watched him trim brisket. I'd always just sit there eating, but also watching him get in the zone with his earphones on. I remember thinking like, wow, you know, I'm going to have to be someday doing that. Just like admiring how he got to that point of where he's trimming briskets. Just trimming down the fat cap. As I'm trimming, I'm trying to make uh, every piece of the brisket a good piece of brisket. I do not believe I've mastered it. I'm never content to what I make, which is why I always like to tweak things. And I, I definitely saw that in him. Yeah, it also motivates me to try and come up with things, you know? It's a pretty good looking brisket to me. Right before we opened up, after he passed away, I had no idea how we were gonna do it, if we were gonna do it, and if we would make it. I was scared, I was really scared. I was anxious of what people would think. Just to work like nothing happened is, was very tough, very tough. Looks like it'll be to go, huh? Yeah. All right. Thank you, thank you very much. Love. Él empezó y pues todo siempre nosotros fuimos un matrimonio bien unido, bien si si él decidía una cosa yo lo apoyaba, si yo decidía algo yo lo si veíamos que era para bien nos apoyábamos los dos, los dos empezamos, pero la el, la principal idea del barbecue fue de él. Fue decisión, yo le hablé hablé con mis dos hijos mayores. Y les dije que si ellos querían, abríamos, el, un, solo nos dábamos un día después de que él murió. Y el, si ellos estaban dispuestos conmigo a abrir el siguiente día. Y que no podíamos quedarnos llorando porque los biles iban a seguir y teníamos biles grandes. Y además el trabajo nos sirve como una terapia a nosotros, de los clientes. Los clientes nos van a ayudar a superar esto más rápido. No fue mucho de una discusión, fue solo que tenemos que hacerlo. Tenemos algo que va aquí. Los clientes que nos ayudan. Nuestro trabajo aquí, esperamos que lo honre, que continúe a honrarlo. El salir de mi país y llegar aquí y tener un negocio propio, llegar yo a ser la dueña de esto, me siento triunfadora. Me siento que triunfé a la par de él. 
afortunada de haberlo conocido por muchas cosas, por mis hijos y por llegar hasta donde estamos. I want to let people know that my dad loved barbecue and he gave it all of his heart and time. It's a passion that he developed and passed it on to us. People will try spraying with other liquids. We might use apple juice or vinegar. We like to use pickle juice. It's just something we want to share to everybody, the passion of barbecue. I felt like he has left a legacy amongst the people who've got to talk to him, got to know him. This is our school. This is what we're learning every single day. It's a different day, it's a different fire, it's a different, uh, different type of brisket. So when he passed away, he kind of pushed me in deep water. And even though he's gone, I needed that push in my life. And that's what's making me become the person I'm becoming. He's teaching me, you know, in a different way, you know, with him being gone. We're not the only people that go through stuff like this where parent or sibling goes through, you know, suicide. It's very tough, but it's, I'm glad we're doing this because I'm glad we're bringing this awareness. For those who've been in that deep hole. One of the things he told me before he passed, right, like the day before he passed, was uh, you're gonna be all right. And he looked at me directly and told me that. And yeah, I just hope that everybody knows that they're going to be all right. <laughs>